What's up guys, this is the next walkthrough for the Dark Souls walkthrough video series. Now I'm going to go over Manus, Father of the Abyss. Um, we left off getting up to the fog gate, so now it's time to cover some tactics for killing him. One of the easiest ways to kill him is by a kind of glitch. If you collect a, a couple of items, you can actually shoot him from a distance without even going through the fog gate. So the first item you're going to want to pick up is in a Norlando, and it's behind this uh, blacksmith here. He's the one that forges the lightning and stuff. You can get here quickly by warping to the pr the chamber of the princess and um, if you walk down through the front where the uh, sentinel guards are you go up the stairs on your right you'll see a pathway down here and if you walk behind him like this uh, you can eventually find a nice little spot where you can open the chest without killing him and in here you'll find the hawk ring and this is so you do more damage with bows Next, you're going to want to pick up the Red Tear Stone Ring. You can find this um, right before you are about to fight the Four Kings. It's in the Valley of the Drakes. Um, there's three dragons right next to the entrance of where you would go into New Londo Ruins, the second part of it. You climb up the ladder and you'll find the Red Tear Stone Ring. Now, this next part is a bit of trial and error. Tr trying to find a spot where you can actually hit Manus. Now if you have low dexterity, this is going to take a while. So you can really just kind of use this as a, I guess like as a buffer or something. You know, you come in and you, you do as much damage as you can with all these arrows. Because I'm only doing 23 because I have no dexterity. Anyways, let me explain the red tear stone ring. If you get your health below a certain point while wearing the red tear stone ring, you do a lot more damage and you can see it pop up with that little purple icon underneath my uh, stamina. So use whatever bow you can do the most damage with. For me it was the Dark Moon bow so I was cycling through all my different bows just to see. And w you also want to use like sniper arrows or, or something like that. Something with a lot of range to help get you the most amount of damage as possible. So you do this for a while until you're done with all of your arrows or until you think you've hurt him enough to where you're ready to go into the fog gate. And then I have one more thing we can do. I know I mentioned this in the last video, but I'm going to mention it again. Um, right here you can find Sif. He's right below the shortcut to the Royal Wood from the Chasm of the Abyss. And all you have to do here is just kill all these uh, spirits and you can free him once you walk up to him. And after that you can summon him during the boss fight. Manus, he's not super helpful but he will distract Manus just a little bit for you to heal sometimes and get some spells off. Alright, so once you're finally ready go through the fog gate but don't run away after you've done the arrows make sure that's the last thing that you do just because his health does regenerate while you're uh, shooting those arrows you see I already took down a quarter of his health before coming in and I'm also gonna come over here and summon Sif. Sif can be kind of difficult to summon at the beginning of the fight just because he's standing so close to the summon sign but you can see it right there as I'm about to summon him as I said before, he doesn't help a ton, but he will distract him and he'll attack him occasionally, giving you enough time to just sink in some attacks. And he does a tiny bit of damage, but not much. So, anyways, um, I was using, as usual, the Homing Crystal Soul Mass, as you guys know, my favorite. Um, another thing I was using is uh, boosting my sorceries. Um, I, I didn't use the broken pendant. I know a lot of people say you should use the broken pendant. I don't find it 
absolutely necessary for this fight. Um, the only attack he has with the broken pendant that's uh, something that you can't completely avoid is the attack where he shoots out the area effect where it like shoots out and then comes back in. But if you just turn around and use your shield, uh, you'll only take a little bit of damage. So it's not a huge deal. So I'd rather just save my rings for uh, other slots or for other things, you know, to boost my other attacks instead of worrying just about him doing one attack a couple times in the battle. So really what you want to look out for is his lunge attacks. Those are your best times to get in some free damage. And if you're in trouble, always just back away and let uh, Sif take some hits because he does take quite a bit of damage. You see, he just took like 3,000 HP, and he's still he's still going. So just use him to your advantage. After you beat Manus, you can do a couple things with his soul. You can either make the catalyst, which is Manus's catalyst, it can be turned into with uh, any catalyst, the Sorcerer's Catalyst, Beatrice's Catalyst, whatever you want to use. Um, what I think is a better option is going to Snuggly the Crow and trading his soul for a dark uh, version of the homing soul mass. Trade a soul, just drop it right next to the nest. You can do this with a ton of different items, but you can only do it with one thing at a time. So don't get too greedy. Just drop it. And make sure when you uh, when you drop it, you don't hit B too many times to back out of this. Because if you start mashing B, you'll end up doing your, your back step jump, and you'll jump right off the edge. So after you do that, just quit the game, load it back up, and your spell will be waiting right here. And that's it. So thanks for watching, guys. Later.